All right, thumbs up, thumbs down. On. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this this call is on you, Martin. Oh, wow. It's... Drew in Wisconsin. Drew? Hi, guys. Thank Hi, you're on the air. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, sure. I just wanted to talk about how I think the feminist movement and the atheist movements should be separated because I see them getting combined more and more. Mm -hmm. And I see some problems with this where basically you're excluding a lot of people who don't fall under both. And that's going to weaken both movements because um, there's going to be religion. Before you go on, let me ask you, uh, a, few, a few callers ago we had a guy who was uh, saying that it hurts the atheist movement to support gay marriage. How do you feel about that? Just want to know where you're coming from. Um, I disagree with that. Um, so you do it, think it's that different. you, you, you think, do that the, think that atheists should have common cause with people supporting gay marriage? Yes. Okay. So, so you don't think atheism should be separated from everything, just feminism specifically? I do think that, okay, see, the way I see it right now is um, the feminist movement and the atheist movements are actually being combined a lot, where... Can you define um, feminism for gay me? Rights. Well, hang on. Uh, okay. No, yeah, no, no. When I see uh, gay rights and um, atheists, an atheist movement, it's more uh, more of an alliance instead of being completely intertwined. Okay. Well, but uh, what I don't really see what I mean. What's the distinction there? If if supporters, if if people who are atheists are also supportive of equality for the LGBT community, how is that different than being supportive of? Equality for you know, uh, say, women or or different races, for example, minority races, anything like that. If it's if it's down to the notion of groups of people should not be discriminated against because of whatever it is about themselves, their their race, their gender, right. superficial a, physical yeah, fact, their sexual preference, and <coughs> and if we can also point to the fact that the people who generally favor discrimination against these groups. You know, like as we talked about in the earlier call today, most of the arguments against same-sex marriage are religious. They're rooted in biblical belief. They're rooted in this idea that the Bible is some sort of moral authority and that God considers homosexuality an abomination. So there you have, for example, you know, a, a specific set of moral precepts that the opponents of this kind of equality are using that are rooted in religion. Then, as, even though atheism itself, on its own, is simply the rejection of theistic claims, wouldn't it be a natural offshoot to say, okay, well then, if we are opposed to these religious beliefs, then the moral precepts these religious beliefs are trying to impose upon society that are unfair to other groups of people are also things we should oppose. I mean, wouldn't you consider that to be kind of a natural adjunct yeah, yeah I, okay. I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Um, so I, can I, I kind of want to move on here because I think we have a bit well, of... Well, I just, just want to understand why, why you don't have a problem, for example, with atheism allying yeah. with one particular equality movement, and, but, you do in terms of, but you do with this other one. And well, can I, I'm going to get to that. Um, basically, it's a, we're having an issue with the definition of terms here. Okay, Which is go ahead. the definition of feminism. Give um, your definition. Yeah. Where I'm talking more about the um, feminist ideology of radical modern feminism. Which, which is what? Which is what? Male patriarchy, male privilege, rape culture, you that mean kind of thing. the idea that male patriarchy exists? And, um, which I, re that's the... Radical feminist idea. And that, do you think that's a radical idea? That's that, radical. You don't. You don't think that that um, we live in a male-dominated society. Well, if um, patriarchy, from the definition, is a system of society or government in which men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it. Okay. And you, and you, how many? How many? Uh, did, have you society? got a good idea what proportion of congressmen or congress people are women? Uh, it's around 20%, but the problem with that Have is Have you got that, an idea um, how many Fortune 500 CEOs are women? 
you equated women with feminism, which is a faulty equation. Well, uh, no, feminism no, is you a just said it was a radical idea that, yeah. uh, that society tends to be male-dominated, and I'm just trying to explore that. Why is that radical? Is it false? Yeah, I mean, are you, are you denying that, that there are more <laughs> men in position of power and influence in our culture and in our society than women? Are you denying that that is actually the case? Okay, again, no, I'm not It's, it's a yes or no question. Women. Are you denying that there are more men in position of power and influence and governance in our society than women? Uh, with governance, there are uh, about 20% are women. However, so that, that, so would then that, would be, that would be less than the 80% okay, that are like, men. Right? Can, I yes. explain my, can I explain my position, which is where... A woman can be anti-woman, and a man can be pro-woman. So that statistic alone does not explain um, the full power. For instance, uh, Dr. Oh, so Warren we Merrill. So we want to rely on all these male senators to, uh, uh, to appropriately represent their constituencies. How are they doing at that, by the way? Um, well, okay, for instance, take Dr. Warren Farrell, who wrote the book of myth, uh, The Myth of Male Power. Um, he was right, a feminist for a guy. long time. Uh -huh. and I, yeah, he, say, same as a whole a bunch of apologists come at us and say, I used to be an atheist like you. Yeah, I, I, I think, well, I mean... I do not for a second buy that Warren Farrell was a feminist by any uh, yeah. recognizable definition of the word. And, and again, I, and, and I don't... To a feminist council. I, I don't even, I don't, and, and like I said, I didn't really, I, I didn't <laughs> ask about it. I don't really care about him. I, 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 I want to get back to the original question. Are you denying that in our culture and in our society today, there are more men in positions of, in positions of power, influence, and governance than women, just, okay, just in terms uh, of a, numbers. There's a couple things here. Positions it's a yes or no question. Do you deny? Not, positions of power do not include just governance. The media, it has a lot to do with governance. Don't and care. Don't care. I'm not, ask, you, I'm not you asking you. Do you think that the media, the, do you think that influential media people are, by and large, more male or female? I would say they're more for women's rights than men's rights. I didn't ask you what the position was. Are men specifically, like human beings, male human beings versus female human beings, are there more men in position of power influence and or governance in our society than women just as a sheer matter of numbers yes or no as a sheer i don't i'm a governance like i said it's about 20 percent. stop female, trying to nitpick the question more, it is yes or men, no you keep interrupting me i'm trying to answer your question no you you're trying you're you're, you're doing this in no, little mexican you're hat dance very around. hard not to answer the question is the point here yeah i'm trying to get in the full answer without getting cut off which is uh, eighty percent of government positions are male. Okay, so then the answer. So then in the media, I don't know what the positions, what the percentages are, but I'd be uh, willing to guess it's a lot closer to fifty-fifty. You willing, it. willing to guess? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, what I mean, I you know, we could guess I mean, that there are manatees in position of Fortune five hundred company CEO positions. Guessing doesn't really matter here. Okay. Right. I mean, but, basic, basically, you are accusing people of being of being radical for something which, as far as I can tell, is accurate. And yeah. I don't mind being a radical for the truth. Yeah. No, um, I disagree again. The pictures are that it's not just about numbers. You're, you're conflating the tier numbers with power. And but but you're, if you want to do that, how many more? Uh, how many people? are men in society and how many people are women in society. There are a lot more women in society than men. And yet there are more men in positions of power and influence and governance in society than women, despite the fact that demographically, in terms of the population, it's fairly e evenly split. And this is now where I the concept like of inequality a, comes from, is it not? I feel like you have a double standard here because you don't, like, you don't actually have the numbers on that. Like you just claimed, I don't have the numbers on the media coverage. And power is not something easily definable. If you um, define power as uh, people who vote, because voting has a lot to do with who gets voted in to the positions of power in government, 54% um, well, of the uh, voter turnout is female. 
Yeah, but you, you specifically cited, though, as a radical claim and as one that you rejected, this notion that we live in a society in which there are more men running the show than women. <coughs> right? Well, more hey, more uh, a patriarchy. Since you well. just accused us of having no more information than you do, I just did a quick Google search. Uh, the Guardian tells me that... Uh, a study recently discovered that 74% of news journalists are men. So I guess we have the answer to that question yeah. now. So okay. it, we're looking in terms, of, in terms of the numbers. It's 54% female, and that they what? decide who gets elected um, to govern. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> Why, I, we just missed that. What did, what, what did you just say? Voter turnout is around 54% female yeah. and 46% male because there are more women than men, and women vote at a higher rate, 66% to 61%. Fair enough, but that doesn't change you know, the figures that we have the just... The fact that people in actual positions of power are, by and large, men. When we talked so about government, that, you didn't want to talk about that, government. Um, you wanted to change the subject to, subject to journalism. So, okay, I have looked up the numbers for journalism, and there again, if that's a position of power, most of them are men. Yeah. Well, we're not talking about women. We're talking about feminism, which is what I was trying to... <laughs> No, uh, we are talking no, yeah, about your difference. claim yes. that the that the notion that there that there exists male pa patriarchy or male privilege is a radical claim, and I think so far we've been demonstrating that this is in fact true. Yeah. So if no, I don't. If your don't problem is true. radical feminism, and if your definition of radical feminism is people who are saying things that are accurate. Then, okay, uh, let's go back to the definition of patriarchy that I gave, which was a system of society or government in uh -huh. which men hold the power, and this is the key part, and women are largely excluded from it. Mm -hmm. Now, when yeah. women are voting at 54%, I don't agree that... The They're voting, government. but again, are they in excluded. power? Are they in power? And, and remember, and, and when, when did women actually get the vote? Uh, Russell, because they uh, haven't had it well, for the same amount Martin, of time that it seems like uh, that men have. white male landowners have always had the vote if, back to the founding of this country, uh, and and women only got the vote in what was it the twenties? The early yeah, the, in the nineteen right. yeah. yeah, and back when suffragettes were the fighting for the right of women to vote, um, guys like you were yelling tooth and nail that, that they should not have vote, that right. Not a male vote. <laughs> the male represented the family. Not yeah. the individual. But the point is, we've just now given several examples where the numbers show that, yes, in fact, men are dominating not only governance, but most major industries, fields, professions, or at least the ones that we've been able to find examples for. <coughs> and so but you have not the definition of patriarchy that, that you are giving to us doesn't appear to be radical. It appears to simply be accurate. The numbers back it up. There are more your, men in position of power. By my definition, there was a part of women are largely excluded. Just so because yeah, because if they're not getting more, these positions, if they're not getting these positions, that is exclusionary, is it not? If you look yeah. at the rates, women are growing in these positions at a much higher rate. Well, I well, would hope so, when there's because nowhere they're way, to, way behind to start with. Yeah, I mean, when there's nowhere to go but up, you can't help but grow, but it's still very slow, right? Let me give you my industry. I work in film and television. Uh, at, on an average, in a given year, major <coughs> studio motion pictures, 16% are, are directed by women. Okay, I so they're in... in I, I work at a major software company. In my office, there are something like uh, 30... 40 men and like two or three women. Yeah. Again, this is women and men. This is not um, dealing with necessarily feminism. Yeah, here's but, what it um, comes down to. Ultimately, you don't care about, uh, about the relative positions of women and men. And I do, which is why I'm a feminist. And we're running out of time. Yeah. See, that would be a fun call. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was kind of a fun call. And you know what's going to be more fun? Mm -hmm. All the hate mail we get after this show.